All right, y'all. Day one, no coffee. Wait, did I have coffee today? No, I didn't have coffee. Day one, no coffee. I wasn't trying to like do it, but I'll, I I don't know. If I I feel like sometimes if I don't have coffee, I'm just I be I be fiending. So I might need to take a break. You know, <laughs> I might need to take a break because that caffeine, no joke. I saw this video, just a clip of it, and not even the whole clip, just a little bit of it on Instagram. And the first thing that caught my attention, obviously, was my, my like, that, that hairdo caught my attention. The second thing, I don't know what this was. I thought this was a hookah at first, but I still don't even know what that is. I don't even want to try to explain it because it looks crazy. The more, I, the more I look at it, the crazier it looks. But this is from a YouTube channel. Um, his name is Bryce Crawford. I've never watched any of his videos before. So let's check it out. The title of the video is Praying for an Atheist. I don't know what to expect. Let's get into it. Guys, welcome back. It's been a while. Ever since the Palestine video kind of went ghost. Not really though, like right after the Palestine video, a few weeks later, I got like incredibly ill. I lost 15 pounds, got crazy sick, it was insane. So I had to cut the website off for the shirts, I couldn't package the shirts anymore. And I wasn't making any videos, I was worried about my health. But we got healthy, visited the doctors, got everything right, and now it's time to hit the street again. But even though we weren't recording, doesn't mean we weren't evangelizing because it's a lifestyle. I don't want to put on a facade for a camera and then go home in private and be like the total opposite, you know? And so it was really cool because there was a moment when I was super sick and I was praying that God would heal me with my own health and nothing would happen, but then I would pray for other people and they would get healed immediately <laughs> in Jesus' name. And I was like so confused as to like why that was happening. But God really encouraged me right after I got healthy. He was like, man, despite your sickness, it didn't stop you from believing for other people's miracles. And so I just want to share that, what I learned with you, because you know, sometimes we can let our own circumstance define our faith. What the truth of the word says and who Jesus is in his character can triumph what the what the world would make sense in your brain. You know, the world would say, oh, you're sick, no one else would get healed. And man, Jesus still wants to meet people where they're at despite sickness. And, and it was definitely tough sometimes and really hard mentally just going through it and being sick and being in pain. But I had great roommates, great friends around me, and uh, it was awesome. But we're back, headed to Venice Beach, hopefully pray for people and just see people encounter Jesus. And yeah, we just want to bless people today. What's up, y'all? What's up? Zach. Nice on. to meet you, Zach. It's disrespectful right, to shake people's hands while you're sitting. Oh, thank you, Zach. Nice no to problem. meet you. What's your name? I'm Bryce. Bryce. Yeah, nice to meet you, bro. I know this is random, but I know you work hard. Do you get any like back? Are you? Does your back hurt like when you do this? Well, yeah, like, you can tell because I'm like. Does it? Out. Does it hurt right now? <laughs> nah. Not really. Nah, I'm feeling, feeling good right now. I okay. sing a lot. Uh -huh. Right now, my um, vocal cords, my they're a little inflamed. Does it hurt right now? No, it doesn't hurt. It's just it's constricted. It's a little limited. Okay. Yeah. Now, the only pain that I have right now is emotional. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, bro. We're just going to bless you and pray that God gives you guidance. Pray for back pain to never come back, vocal Hell cords yeah. to be released. Yeah, just ask God to help you with your with your emotional pain because so yeah. I just want to pray that God just like heals that in your heart. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Can dude. I lay my hands yeah, on you? Is that okay? It, Jesus, I just thank you for Zach. God, we just bless him. God, we just pray Psalm 119 that your word may be a lamp to his feet. God, will you just give him guidance? God, we just pray for any back pain that comes to be gone in Jesus' name. We pray that you will release the constriction in his vocal cords. God, we just thank you for his creativeness. We pray for a blessing in his music and his career. God, will you just give him wisdom and even, even more creativeness when it comes to his music. And God, we just thank you for Zach. We thank you for bringing us to him and, and bringing his character to interact with us, God. And we just pray anything emotional that's going on with him, whether he's struggling mentally, God, we know that the war in our mind is the greatest war that we fight. So Amen. Jesus, right now, I just pray for a clean mind in Jesus' name. God, will your holy Spirit just renew him and comfort him and like your word says with a prince of peace that surpasses all understanding comfort Zach when he's at his lowest God we love you and we bless him in Jesus name amen amen thank you brother yeah I love that you was bro really sweet dude thank you bro we love you dude it said hold on one second it said we passed by this gentleman earlier wanted to love on him and share Jesus. When we talked about God, he would cut me off. Listen to how the Lord shows him love and patience in this conversation. 
whether you believe in God or not. If it's God, a nice idea. If God could do a miracle in your life, what would uh, that miracle be? I would ask for multiple ones. Okay. I'll probably have them wax some people I don't like. You know, uh, there's a bunch of them. I'll probably have them, you know, since all I remember my entire life was praying as a child and people dying left and right. Huh. I'm like, why can't he just one time get it right and get the people I can't stand? I grew up one side of my family was Muslim, the other side was Christian, so pick a side or get beat up when you're little. Wow. I used sorry. to know the whole language of Arabic, and my grandmother tried to baptize me. That didn't go well. Uh. <laughs> and she tricked me in the bathroom with candy, lying to the kids. You want some candy? Get uh. in the tub. Blah, blah, blah. Wow. <laughs> As you grow up, you had a different outlook on how things go. Man, Amir, I'm sorry that you, <laughs> that you got tricked in the bathroom uh, uh, when you were younger. Man, all that I'm stuff is a, it's a nice little hustle. I'll put it like that. But I've learned over these years just figure out how to be happy before you get old and fat. Because mm -hmm. I've never seen a homeless pastor. I've never seen a, a pastor looking like this kid over here in front of you. It won't take Tiny Tim home right there. I believe you, you said think something. You take him home. When you said that, that was interesting because when I grew up, I was actually hurt a lot by Christianity too. Oh and, man, they're, they're terrible. There's, they're, they're, they are the biggest game bangers on the planet. <laughs> if you disagree, they will jump on you. And all they got to do is put an invisible cross on and dismiss it. And I always uh, kind of watch them when they get caught with the hookers every uh, blue moon. They get caught at these hooker houses and they try to pray it away. I'm like, no, dude, you gotta cock your pants down. There's a lot of pastors and stuff that have that have done wrong and hurt people, but there, I believe there's also still a lot of good. And I, I was hurt by the bad. It's all made for control. I, think, I know what you're saying. I don't think everyone's like that though, because listen, listen this. Three years ago, I was inside of Waffle House, yeah, and I was because huh? I'm from the South. You know me. Waffle I was consumed by a lot of anxiety and depression. I grew up in a broken home, and when I was there. I had an encounter with Jesus, and I've never I drank. See. Seriously, I've never drank, I've never done drugs. And so I knew I wasn't crazy, and so I totally get what you're saying when there's like, people are people have hurt other people, and people have abused Christianity for money and things like that. Well, but I also, I also believe this, that there is still like, good out there. You know, Jesus actually wants to meet Sky people. Daddy basically only helps people from your culture. He doesn't help people in the ghetto. Well, I it's can, I can. made to make people feel like I can. they don't get down with the plan in the program, then there's this psychological warfare that they kind of draw you into of a spider web. There's a lot of bad, like vultures. but Jesus is the light in the darkness. That's what I mean. Well, and so, hey, you've been hurt by Christianity. I've been hurt by it thing. too, it's, but it's he can be nice, the light for everybody. It's a nice idea. I'll give you that. It's a nice idea. It's a nice Disney thing to, you know, get the kids into. But the reality is when you see somebody die in front of you and there's nothing left, that's all you're going to get. Could I pray for you really quick and bless um, you? Would that be okay? That would really bless me if I could well, pray for you. I gotta think about that. Can I put a hand on your shoulder, Amir? Yeah, if you wanna. I would love to. <laughs> thank you. Jesus, I thank you for Amir, God. I just bless him. Jesus, may you just encounter him in dreams, God. We just love Amir. God, I thank you for his creativity and his and his mind like an artist. God, will you just bless his art? He's fighting it too. You can see he's fighting it. I'm surprised he let him pray for him in the first place, though. That's a big step. That's a lot of progress. And I don't know, because I'm sure we didn't see the whole interaction. I, I'm going to finish the video, but I'm sure we didn't see the whole interaction. I'm sure there was a lot of pushback and there was a lot of tension before that moment. So to even get to that point to where you're praying for him. Amen. I don't think we can expect like every time we go out to evangelize, I don't think we can expect to save every single person that same day that we that we speak to. But maybe we could plant the seed. Maybe we can just point them back towards Christ and then stir up enough curiosity to where they draw closer on their own, you know? Artistic creativity. God, we just ask for you to increase that. God, will you just show them your love and the Prince of Peace surpass all understanding, meet him. Bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. We really do love you. And I'm sorry you've been hurt by Christianity and Christians, but the reason that we do what we do is because we're out here and we want to change the narrative because Christianity has given a bad rap to a lot of people and you've been hurt by a lot of people that claim to be Christian. Mm. But I believe that the love of Jesus is still real. It's still inside of people. And mm. the same love of Jesus that met me inside a Waffle House three Waffle years ago. House. No joke. So he's killing a Waffle House now. Yeah, he's chilling everywhere, bro. He wants well, to meet us where we're at. 
He said, so he's chilling in Waffle House now. <laughs> I'd want to know the story on the hair. I want to know what prompted that hairdo. I want to know, do you have to wake up every morning and do that hairdo? Because that seems like a lot of work. And like, you're, you're, if you're not worshiping God, then you're worshiping the devil. That's just the facts. And you could say, oh, I don't worship the devil. I'm not a Satanist, this, that, and the third. I don't, I don't believe in any of that. Okay, why do you wake up in the morning and put your hair like horns? Like, that took some effort. That's a form of worship, in my opinion. Also, I want to know what's up with this. This looks very, it just looks very creepy. It's given some, like, new age crystal, you know, law of attraction type vibes. But nonetheless, I think he did say some very interesting things. He said, I've never seen a pastor homeless. Basically saying that God takes care, takes care of his people. And God only takes care of his people. Well, you got to think about it like this. If God is, you know, the Bible says that if our earthly parents know how to give us good gifts, how much more do you think God knows how to give us good gifts? And I know I, that he could, that, that passage could be talking about gifts as in, you know, things that we, that we receive here on earth. Um, or it could be talking about, you know, gifts in heaven. But either way, if God is our father and we're his children, of course, he's going to want to provide for us. Of course, he's going to want to give us what we need and then some. So I don't think that's a bad thing that Christians are successful or that Christians aren't struggling but also, the Bible also says that we will be persecuted. The Bible also says that we will face many hardships. So it's like, yeah, you might have some people, some Christians who are doing well, who are successful, but you don't know where that person has been. And also, just because you see somebody have success right now, you don't know where their life is going to turn in the future. They could lose everything. They could be in a worse off position than they were before. And vice versa. Just because you don't have anything right now doesn't mean that this time period is not a developmental time for you to grow spiritually before you experience whatever worldly success God has for you. But I, I understand what he's saying. There's a lot of prosperity preachers who have contaminated the perception of Christianity. And that's unfortunate. And I always say this, and I'll say it again. That's why it's so important for you to get to know God for yourself. Not through the mouth of any other person, because people are naturally sinful. People are always going to let you down. Just like he was saying, his grandma tricked him in the bathroom and, you know, said, hey, come get some candy and then dunked him under the, the water to, to baptize him. Now, I'm sure his grandma, hopefully, you would think, had good intentions and wanted him to be saved and wanted him to know Christ. But that had a lasting effect on him that ultimately turned him in the other direction. But you can't get to know God through the mouths of other people unless you're reading the Bible, which was written by other people, but was inspired by the Holy Spirit. So that is literally the word of God. So I guess that's not a good example. But get to know God by going to God, by reading his word, by worshiping, by praying, by pouring out your heart to him, and then see what's up. Because yes, just like he was saying, God can show up in a Waffle House and meet you wherever you are and speak to you and remind you who he is and change your life forever. It doesn't matter where the place or the time is. It doesn't matter what you're getting into or just got out of. It doesn't matter. But so many people have this perception of God that he's just above all of our small problems, that he's above it all, that he's above how we feel, and that he, he, he's 
not relational enough to the point to come down and actually connect with us one on one as if our problems are too small in comparison to the the huge worldly issues that he's dealing with or the universal or you know you know what I'm talking about the the massive issues that he's dealing with some people think that our problems are too small for God to personally connect with us one on one but that's not the case He's chilling everywhere, bro. He wants to meet us where we're at. In a sense, he was like what I was like yeah. seven years ago. Yeah. Just so hardened to the point that even if you tell him truth, mm -hmm. nothing's going to change. The yeah. only thing that will change his mind is having an, a love encounter with the Holy yeah. Spirit. Right. It really just made my heart move more for him. So yeah. I was like, oh, he... He just needs the gospel more. Right. He needs the love of the gospel. I think like, I can't wait to upload this because I think a lot of people think, get this misperception of like sharing your faith because we post a lot of people that get encountered, you know, like they get encountered, they give their life to Jesus, but like that stuff happens a lot where yeah. like you get cut off, they're hurt by Christianity and stuff like that. They won't even let and you speak. They won't let you speak, kept cutting me off, it kept cutting you off. But I think there's something cool about it because you're gonna run into different types of people. We're gonna come visit him whenever we can. And do we have the faith to go home when the door's closed and pray for wow. Amir and Catalina, right? Because Catalina, off camera, we're talking to her. She's been struggling with depression since she was 15, now she's 60. And she's like, I can't find a cure. And so she's like, you can't pray for me now. I don't want that, but you can pray for me when you leave. And it's like, okay, well, I was already planning on it. You yeah. know, I want to do that. So that stuff right there has to be a big encouragement and also being calm. Like it's easy to get frustrated when people cut you off, yeah. you know, but I think you and I both did a really good job and it's the spirit of God inside of us. Amen. And if we weren't renewing our mind, it wouldn't have happened, but where we can keep our cool and say, okay, he's hurt. He's just venting his issues on us right now. And we just have to, you know, we just have to love on him. So I think that was so sick, but. And praise the lamb, he was even, open to venting. Yeah, that was you know? cool. Because I think about myself, six years ago, mm. I would have, number one, cut you off, told you to get out of my face, right. maybe slap you, and then walk away. Dang. You know, and him yeah. just even being open to talk to Christians, wow. like, that's huge. Yeah, that was fire. You know? That was a great conversation. Don't get discouraged if you share your faith with someone and they're cutting you off or like whatever. We can't d get discouraged because if you guys have seen the podcast, Mark 4, you're going to sow different types of seed. Like people are going to reject it immediately. They might take it, but persecution makes them fall away, or you might sow it on good soil and it, and it bursts, you know? So there's three types of things that are going to happen. You plant seeds, you water seeds, or you yeah. reap the harvest. Are we able to be okay with not seeing the fruit in the moment? Yeah. Are we okay with that? And that's just a heart check, but yeah. I'm glad we got to do saved. that. Amir's going to be saved. Y'all be praying for Amir and Catalina. Yeah because they're gonna get a love encounter. And I pray that one day me and Tanner are able to come visit them and Amir doesn't have those devil horns on and neither does Catalina. And they're just excited to be like, guys, you won't even believe what happened. That same encounter that you guys had in the in the res and in Waffle House, so we had the same encounter. We met the same man you guys wow. met. That's gonna be fire. So we're That's believing nice. for that. It's not if, it's when it happens, Amen. so. Amen. I think, you know, at the end of the day, all we can do is present another option to people. Hey, are you hurting? Are you tired? Are you weary? Do you want a solution? Do you want everlasting peace? Well, here, we have an option for you. His name is Jesus Christ. It's up to them if they want to take that offer or not. And then just like he was saying, we also have to follow up with that in faith and pray for these individuals on a daily basis in some capacity. Because it's their decision at the end of the day. And that's the beautiful part about free will. And that's also kind of like the scary part about free will is because people are not always going to make the right decision. And this is one decision that you literally cannot afford to be wrong about. So we have to be praying for these people because we know how serious it is. It's literally a life or death situation. But that was a cool video. That was a dope video. I'll link it down below in the description if y'all want to check out some more of his content. Um, get in my comments, like this video. I'm out, y'all.